Okay, so I hope everybody's doing good. I just wanted to take a few minutes to, to say, show a very special gift that I got from one of my um, YouTube subscribers. She carved this. When I when she sent me a picture of this, I, I'm not going to say in her name and respects of her, but when she um, showed me a picture of this, I thought it was super. I thought it was super cool. Look, it's a like bold biker with big ape hangers just cruising down the highway. He's got his glasses on. Maybe it's ZZ Top. Look at his beard blowing in the wind. You know, I haven't insured my Harley in uh, two years. I've just been so busy. I was going to try and insure it this year, but just too busy working and carving. But that's, I still got it. I'll be insuring it next summer for sure. But, ta but I'm not going to say your name, but I just want to let you know how much I love this piece. And thank you very much. I'm going to be putting it putting it up around here somewhere so sometimes I can show it. You know, that's that's a real, that's cool. I love it. Hey, isn't that cool? <laughs> I think it's wicked. So thank you again. I love you, and um, you know your carvings are sure getting good. That's for sure. What kind of wood is this? Oh, you got the big, big old chunks of bark on there. Love it. I just love it. Super cool. Thank you. Okay, so now on to carving. A fellow I've been talking to, one of my YouTube subs. He's a whittler. You know, like he uses his knives and stuff to do his little carvings and stuff like that. But he's got power carvings too. And I've been chatting with him quite a bit. That's a good thing about online, guys. Like social media on your Facebook, Instagram. You can meet new friends around the world, right? And, you know, you guys have something in common. You're like-minded, right? So conversation's easy. So he's actually made a really cool carving for me. I'm not even going to talk about it yet because it's, I'm going to make a video on that itself. But uh, yeah, he's a hell of a whittler. Like he does those little figurine kind of things, you know, like. But he carves wood spirits. And he carves all sorts of stuff too. So his name is Robert Vreeland. He's been bugging me. I don't know why. Maybe he just wants to. Well, he's been bugging me to carve a flower. So look, guys. It's kind of a cherry blossom. But this isn't going to turn out to be a cherry blossom when I'm done it. When you guys are carving flowers and stuff like that, you'd, you'd think about depth, okay? So this flower is going to have leaves coming off of it too. So this is a two-inch piece of nice, beautiful western red cedar. Soft wood, guys. Like, look, I can, I can dent it with my nail. This comes from uh, Queen Charlotte Islands, this cedar, actually. But so... You guys, when you guys are, if you don't know how to, if you've never done a flower before, I'm just going to say one hint. I'm no pro at doing flowers. This is supposed to look like a cherry blossom right now, but when I'm done carving, it's not going to be a cherry blossom. People think my flowers look like dogwoods. But when you're doing your flowers, oh, so this has one, two, three, four, five lines. Always look at your piece straight on and draw your line straight. Like, don't draw it like this, off that circle. You know what I mean? Don't draw it like this or like, like, that make sure your lines are coming straight off your circle so that's straight you know what I mean because if you're gonna do start doing them like this off that way for this type of flower anyways you're gonna have problems okay so anyways I'm gonna start carving I'm gonna be using my cut my go-to burr guys my cut saw extreme flame burr okay this is my go-to burr again for the billionth time look in the description below use the code C fusion when you go to the cut saw site save yourself five percent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut below, straight up and down, below the, these leaves. These flower petals, whatever, okay? Cut straight up below. And I'm going to carve lots of depth. And there's going to be leaves. I'm not going to draw the leaves on yet. Like, there's going to be leaves kind of, kind of coming out here like this. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to draw them on yet because I'm just carving all that away. So leaf, leaf, leaf. You know what I mean? So I'd lay your leaves like your scales too, guys. So yeah, like you can see, there's the center of the leaf here. Okay, so I'm gonna start carving.
guys can see here now I got it all blocked out this flower is raised above so there's different ways you can go about this I'm not no pro at doing this guys this is just the way I do it okay so you can undercut the flowers right now you know like that means going 45 going underneath the petals to get the shadow effect I don't think I'm gonna do that right now so you got to remember this is a square block wall rectangle whatever shape you call it you know it's not going to look like that when I'm finished. It's going to look it's going to look like round. You know, it's the flower is going to be the highest point and then the leaves are going to be coming down too, like down this way on all four sides. So I think right now what I'll do is draw some leaves on all the way around it, just one row of leaves. And then I'm trying to make this so you guys can understand how I do it too. You know what I mean? So Put some shapes in your leaves too, guys, if you want. Where's Grumpy Jesse right now? I don't think he'd be approving of me carving this flower. So your leaves are going to be short here, so we're going to bring them down the side. And this is going to be the time where we start rounding it off. You know what I mean? It starts sinking down on the side because it's a shorter side. Okay, well... Okay, so now what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do exactly what I did for these flowers, okay? For these leaves on this, I'm gonna cut all the way around and then I'm gonna feather the cuts away. I'm not gonna do any undercutting yet, okay? So this is what some wood carvers would be called blocking it out. Okay, so I'm finished blocking out my first set of leaves. There's all different ways you guys can do this, guys. You're gonna, you're gonna, uh, Think of your own ways, right? So the more, so once I put my cuts in here and I feathered this away, the more that you feather away when you're doing it, like the more of this wood that you take away, away to make these petals look higher, the least you're gonna have to do later. Like I said, I think I already said, I don't want this to look like a square. You know what I mean? So I took some of that away too, some corners away. But the deep, the more leaves you, you do, the deeper you're gonna carve. Okay, so at this point I can start undercutting my, I do deep undercuts too guys. I'll be using my, um, well I'll show you when I get to the point. I'll be using a cut saw, where the hell, yeah here it is. I think this is a cut saw taper. Look how aggressive that is. So I'll be doing the undercuts really deep. The deeper that you do the undercuts, the more shadow effects you're going to get off the carving. And this flower is not going to sit so flat. Okay, so let's draw on our second set of petals. So like I said now, this is when it's gonna really start taking shape because these petals are gonna start hanging over the edge, right? And I kind of go in between petals. It's kind of like fish scales, guys. I'm surprised I haven't carved a koi fish yet because that's what I started carving. And I drew lots of them too. I like I like doing the carving, uh, the koi fish and the scales. They're just overlapping, right? So. It's like scales, you know, you just put your two things in the middle of the last two petals, bring it out, and then it's easy, and it's, uh, whatever, getting off topic here, Jordy. Okay, so this one, see how those are pretty tight, so I can't put them, I can't put the petals coming outside of there, so I'm going to overlap this one, and this one, see how it overlaps there? This petal will be higher from this petal, and this petal will be coming out. Okay, so just you're not going to see a full petal here, so we'll wrap it around. Oh yeah, I kind of rounded off the bottom so you can, so it looks like the petals are wrapping around. Okay, let's just keep going forward off this petal and put shape to your petals too, guys. It really helps. Okay, so let's give this one here bending around. See how it's kind of whoosh, then bending. I don't know. Okay, now we're back to where we could do the, the what, what do I got going here? Yeah, we're back to where we can do this part again like this. That needs to be cut deeper there. Okay, so let me get these next petals carved in here and I'm gonna be carving really deep around this these petals too. So I'm gonna do my cut marks and I'm gonna cut all, feather all the, the marks away.
Okay guys, you can see here, now I got it all blocked off. So yeah, this still looks like a goddamn rectangle flower, but that's okay. Somebody can hang it on their wall like this or whatever they want. I should have taken the time to cut out the, made it more like a shapely, but this is a quick video and you know, whatever. It is what it is. Okay, so. Now uh, what I'm going to do is use this cuts all tapered bird. Look how aggressive that sucker is. And the um, and I'm going to undercut. This is when it's really going to start taking shape, guys. I'm going to undercut everything, okay? All deep in here. You know, so it, when you do undercuts, like on a 45, okay? It will give a shadow effect like this flower is raised off the leaves and undercut every single one of the, underneath these leaves everywhere to make sure the leaves, it will show, Jesus, some days I just can't talk properly, but oh well. It will just show that the leaves aren't touching the other ones and it will give a nice little shadow effect in there, okay? So I got to do that all the way around. This is about, I don't know. Half an hour worth of carving for me all the way around deep in there okay I won't even shape the flower yet but the deeper that I undercut these leaves underneath the flower the more shape I can give the flower say if I undercut this leaf here like that deep gir deep then I can make this flower petal bend down because I got that room you know the more you guys this is a layer carving okay the deeper that you carve your layers, the better your piece is going to look. In my opinion, carve, Jordy, carve. Hey guys, just letting you know, I took it outside and uh, cut it up with my bandsaw and just recarved the, the leaves in there, petals, whatever you want to call them, quickly. I couldn't stand that shape. So this is better now. Still kind of funny shape, but whatever. Okay, now I'm going to do all the undercuts. I got my coffee refilled up with some wood chips in there. You know, you're not a wood carver if you don't have wood chips floating around in your coffee. So I did cedar roofing for like, I don't know, cedar shake roofing for 15 years when I was younger. So I'm pretty immune to this stuff so I can drink it. Don't worry, it won't kill me. A lot of people are allergic to it. Okay, so I got all my undercuts in here. Most of them, I might've forgot a couple. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go in underneath these undercuts and smooth everything out. Okay, smooth it all out, make it nice and kind of clean, cleaner. And shape these, uh, well, we'll talk about shaping these leaves after. Okay guys, so you can see there, I got all the undercuts done, and like you see how far deep I go in here, underneath there. So you can see the shadow effects, like here's a, sh uh, how can I show you, here's a shadow right here. So the deeper you go, the deeper that you carve underneath there, 
the more shadow effects you're going to get. This is a big bulky flower carving. If it's not a big bulky one and you want it to be thinner and what's the word petite? Well, just don't carve your underneath your undercut so big. Like look how deep I went on undercut there. You know what I mean? So another thing when I was carving guys too that I thought a good key point to say for the real beginning wood carvers, power carving's different. Like using the Dremels and stuff like that is a lot different than using gauges, uh, knives and whittling and chisels and stuff like that. When you're using chisels, you pay a lot more attention to which way the grain's going. When you're power carving, this thing can carve any which way. But, you know, always try and pay attention to which way the gra grain's going, guys. Like you can see, it's going this way. Okay, like you can see the grain right there. It's all going this way. So... When you're carving little tips like this, and the grain's going this way, it has a good chance of snapping right there, right? This, this, so this whole tip will snap off. Because the grain's going this way, and it will just obviously make sense. It will just break off. But when you're carving a tip this way, you know, a nice, or let's see, let me give you a better example. Right here, if you're carving a tip this way, where the grain's going this way, it's not going to break off as easy as the grain going this way on this tip because it's going with the grain. It's hard for me to explain, but I, I, maybe you can figure that, figure that out. But it, you should always pay attention, in my opinion, guys, to which way the grain's going when you're doing little tiny pieces like this. You know what I mean? So I know the grain's going that way, right? The grain's going this way. So this piece isn't gonna break off as easy as something this, when the grain's still going this way, this could just snap off, just, you know, shale shale off you know what i mean think of it as like a kit cats the, or a coffee crisp chocolate bar in the different layers right well this is different layers going this way right it could snap off there if that makes sense okay i don't think i need to yell so now we're going to start working on the flower i'm going to carve this out i'm going to make the centerpiece round i'm going to carve all these out and i'm going to you see how deep I carved here now the flowers that's why I said it's a layered carving now the flowers the petals or whatever you want to call them are layered you know what I mean here's a layer here's a layer here's a layer okay so you got four layers here there's the bottom layer there's this layer there's this layer and then there's the top layer okay that's what I call a layer carving so let's work on the flower now I'm going to carve this out, make this centerpiece round. I'm going to carve here. This petal might be overlapping this petal with layers, guys. So now this flower is going to be layered itself. It's not. I'm not just going to carve this out like this, you know, straight, and just leave them a straight cut in there. I'm going to layer them, give it lots of texture. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. <music> So, excuse me, there's a flower on here. So one layer, two layers. So here's, uh, okay, so one layer, two layers, three layers, so four layers, maybe even five. So you see what I'm saying? This is That's what this thing is about, is layering and doing the undercuts. Now look at all the shadow effects, guys. Look at the shadows. Like, look for here, for example. Look how big the shadows are. It's just me, guys. Just my opinion. Look at that shadow. That means that's a deep cut in there, and that shadow will stick over farther. Undercut. Okay? So, now what I'm going to do, again, with my cut saw, I've already did it a bit on the flowers. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay? So now, I'm just going to simply, which way these leaves go, this one's kind of coming this way, so I'm going to do a cut line like that. This one's straight. This one, cut line under. Cut line, cut line, cut line. This one, cut line, cut line, cut line, cut line, cut line, cut line. So, 
now what I'm going to do, see all these lines in here. <clears throat> I just drew them on for you guys, excuse me. I'm going to cut deep in these, not that deep, but deep in these lines all the way to the tip because this is going to be like the center of the, you know, it's going to kind of, let's see if I can kind of, whatever. I'm going to cut here and then round it off so it's more character in the leaf. So I'm going to do that all the way around right now. Okay guys, so there you can see, this flower petal is kind of a little off, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Are any flowers perfect? Here you can see I got all the lines cut into things, okay? Now what I'm going to do quickly is hit it with my little flop sounder, look at my playlist, you guys will see how I, I make this, it's emery cloth, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm going to sound this quickly, and then we'll do some little flower line things. Okay guys, so I got it sounded a little bit. So remember guys, I'm not a pro carver. I'm just like you guys and, and I like you know anybody can do this stuff. So you know, like here there's no not much of an undercut. You can see how it just kind of just goes up there, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I did ask Pete if I could borrow his burner again, but I'm not going to use it. That's just too it's an antique, so I don't want to break it. So I know this old, uh, this is a real dull, uh, little tiny uh, burr set that you buy off Amazon, like a metal working burr. So and I know this thing's dull, so it burns the wood. So I'm going to go along and just put some little flower lines in this thing. And then I might lightly hit this with the torch after and give it another sanding. And then it will almost be done. Okay. Okay, so you guys can see when I was using that bit, it didn't uh, burn the pieces like I thought it would. I did put some little holes in there. I don't know, whatever. So, I did all the leaves too, like little leaf veins all the way around. You know, you guys, if you if you do detail on your carvings, that's, that's what's going to make your carving is, you know, spending time doing the detail. So, once again, guys, Pete, let me use this old, old wood burner because I'm going to be buying a Burn Master. I'm just waiting until I buy this so Pete let me use it again even though I broke a tip. So I will be taking my time. As a few of you instructed me, this is a whole new venture for me guys using a wood burner. But this thing's made in Colombia. If anybody knows any type of information about this, please leave a comment, comment in the description below. How this thing works is you put this red thing in here, say, so that's medi mediano so we'll take it small medium large okay so not hot medium hot so you just put this thing in here too just crazy old thing oops that's hot we want medium because the hotter you use these things the more they bend okay so that's ready to go so i'm going to start just doing some quick light burning no i'm not pushing hard on this I might be going a little fast, but I will not push hard on this and break this piece. Okay, so let me get started on that. I'm sure if I took my time more. Well, this cedar burns nicer than the cottonwood, that's for sure. So I'll finish this up and then I'm going to sand it lightly again. And maybe give it a light burn with my torch too, just to get rid of any fuzzies. And we'll be back. Okay, so I got everything burnt in there as much as I want to. I see a couple missed spots, but no big deal. And look, Pete, same tip. Same tip, didn't break it. Took my time. Okay, so I'll be packages thing packaging this up for you and bring it back to you tomorrow so I don't break it okay so I should win an award for that 
Jordy, the man with the most patience. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just quickly hit this with uh, my sander. This is like a 3 340 grit or something, guys. Really fine grit. And uh, lightly hit it. I think I'm going to still torch it a bit and put some stain on it because this, I thought this wood would be a lot darker, but it's not that dark. Let's do a little spit test here. It's been a while since we've done a spit test. So I don't really like the color of that. So I will be staining the whole thing one color. Okay, so there you go, Robert Vreeland. There's your carbon fusion flower. What would what would you call that? Two D. <clears throat> Do I love this piece? No. Do I hate it? No. Um, I'll tell you why I don't love this piece is because I don't think the grain of this wood worked for this carving. You can see the grain there. I just don't. I would like to see this carving kind of more without seeing the grain. You can see the bottom here, it's tighter grain than here, it's looser grain. So I think a carving like this, you shouldn't see the grain of wood. But guys, it is wood carving, so whatever. Somebody can hang this on their wall. I stained the, the plant, the flower part, a different reddish color than the leaves. I burnt the whole thing, and when I burnt it, I lost some of my detail. I understand, guys, I could go back over the low points with my burner, with Pete's burner that I borrowed, but no sense. It's done. It says what it is. That's what it's about, guys, learning how to carve and just carving it so, you know, it's a, pl it's a, it's a flower plant thing. Okay, so, guys, if you want to subscribe to my page, that's cool. If not, whatever. And um, this took a while. And uh, there you go, bud. There's your carbon infusion flower. 2D or 3D? I don't know. I really don't care to tell you the truth. I'm done with this thing. I'm done with you! Damn it. Oh yeah, I forgot to say something. Sign your goddamn pieces, people! Sign your pieces! Ugh.